to you, Knut. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Mark, and nice to see you. And welcome to the Valo team. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, good morning to you guys. Or for at least for me, it's good morning uh, since I'm calling in from Norway and from Europe. So uh, it's good to be here. Uh, let's see how it will be with uh, my kids and everything, because normally during this time of the day we are prepping to go to the kindergarten, so uh, they are all awake and uh, yeah, it will be interesting. It's kind of an hour with you guys, so let's see how it goes. But I'm happy to be here and it's really cool to kind of be part of the APEC edition as well, since I kicked off the European edition of the Valofest. So so this is great. And, and yeah, I have prepared a few slides for you guys, so let me see if I can get that to work right now. And uh, let's see, I think you should see my screen now, yes? Oh, good, perfect, thank you. And I will just swap, so you should see it perfectly now, I guess, yes? Yes, excellent. Awesome, so yes, hello everybody, and yeah, my name is Knut, and uh, I am delighted to be here today uh, to discuss a little bit tips and tricks for Microsoft Teams in your workplace. Uh, maybe you heard those tips that I will present to you already. Maybe you know all these features. I don't know. Uh, maybe you have some tips to share. Uh, so if you do have some really cool tips that I don't mention that you think everybody on the call need to know, feel free to point them out in the chat or raise your hand and unmute yourself and, and come and share because that's what Wallofest is all about, is sharing the knowledge and the expertise that each and every one of us is having. Uh, so, so again, uh, my name is Knut. So I'm a partner manager and product evangelist of Wallo. I have been traveling a lot to Australia for the last two, three years, but the COVID gr grounded me back home in, in Norway. Uh, so I'm really excited to still be able to, to join you guys remotely and to be part of, of the Wallofest for, for the APEC region. It's a region I really do love and, and care all a lot about and feel free to connect with me on social media or in LinkedIn. There's only one Knut Relbemoe and that's me, so it should be super easy to find me. Uh, I have a really unique name, so so that should be really easy. So so yeah, so but let's get this show started and I, I like this to be interactive if possible. So if there's someone that really uh, have something to share, raise your hand and, and we will we will take you take your questions. Uh, if not, you can feel free to also type in the chat and, and my good buddy Mark will uh, will uh, look after them and uh, respond to them or raise whatever needs to be raised to me as well. So, uh, and also feel free to go on social media. We have the hashtag AskValofest. Uh, where you can also go in and uh, ask the question. So people actually that is in Europe, like myself, that is just waking up uh, because here it's like 7 a.m. can also interact with you guys later on as well. Uh, so yeah, meetings, let's do that first because how can we do the most out of the remote meetings? I know that the pandemic and everything now is getting back to normal, hopefully, uh, so that we will uh, hopefully be able to meet more in person and not only sit behind the screen and see each other like we have been doing for the last two, three, four months, depending on where in the world you are. Uh, but but yeah, meetings is still going to happen for a lot of us uh, remotely. I think what is the new next is that we will have hybrid uh, environment. So a lot of people might sit from home. Some will go to the office. Uh, so some will have the in-person meetings, others will have the meetings uh, by by Microsoft Teams or other, other platform and how to make the most of those. Uh, one thing you can do is like like this, like my kids is doing right now, is to enjoy the Valo activity book. Uh, and you see my, kid, my son, he also has the Australian t-shirt on, as I mentioned, I've been there many times and this is one of his favorite t-shirts. So uh, so he, he really loved to wear that one. And it was really cool that uh, the Valo team created these activity books. And when I, I showed this to my kids yesterday, uh, they were so excited and they are still still not finished with them. So, so that's, it could be a good tip for every other organization as well. Uh, help your workers to, to actually work remotely or sit at home working because it's kind of challenging to, 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 to juggle everything with, with uh, your kids that need attention. Uh, then you need to be in meetings and all these kind of things. Uh, other things while you are in a meeting that is really important is stay on mute when you're not talking because there's a lot of people that suddenly go and do something, they type the keyboards, they uh, might even go to the restroom while they are in the meeting, who knows, they might go to make a cup of coffee and then you have all this background noise that 
we, we might not need uh, during our calls. Um, and um, if you are kind of the moderators or if you are the presenter and you see that um, there, there's a few that has some issues or if you are just another person on the call and you hear a lot of background noise, uh, you can actually also mute them so so that other people are not uh, having any disturbance. Um, one thing that I do like is to use the chat so that uh, if you have in the meetings and, and you have something to say, you can always go on chat uh, to, to kind of also have a little bit more uh, not needing to be on the microphone or not needing to be in the spotlight because a lot of employers, they uh, they are a little bit not so keen to be on the camera all the time, so that's why I really love to also use the chat. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, a lot of times uh, maybe your Wi-Fi doesn't work that well because maybe your kids are sitting and streaming something at the same time. So if you don't need to be on the camera, you can always uh, go off the camera as well to to kind of help on that. Um, and um, if you do present like I do right now, there's a few tricks that you need to be also keep in mind. For instance, if you're sharing a web page, make sure you zoom in because maybe your resolution is higher than the other people and everything. Uh, since you have the teams, the window is pretty small in some way since you have all the things on the side and everything. So make sure you uh, zoom in if you can uh, so that people will actually see what you're showing. Um, if you're presenting, it's good to have a great headset to do so so that people will hear you properly. Um, if you uh, only uh, are planning to share a PowerPoint file, uh, you don't need to share the full screen as I just did. Uh, it will be a lot better just to share uh, your PowerPoint file because it's a lot smaller, so it will not take that much bandwidth. Uh, and of course, use video when you can, uh, either use blur background or, or you can also now, of course, change your background to the nice backgrounds that you have, uh, just as uh, the one that I have behind me right now. So, uh, so yeah. Um, and how can we share uh, a video with audio? Because this is typically sometimes you also want to do that. Maybe you want to show a presentation with a video. Uh, maybe you want to show uh, a YouTube file or whatever then you need to make sure that you click this over here that it means include system audio because if you don't do that, uh, people will not be able to hear whatever you are playing uh, while you are showing it. Uh, custom backgrounds. Custom backgrounds came like uh, a few months ago uh, and after they came, then we got the possibility to uh, add our own custom background and uh, by mistake, a lot of people started to flip the images uh, because it looked like uh, it was flipped when you're adding them. Uh, I did that mistake, I can honestly say that. Uh, and I thought that uh, since it was flipped on my screen, then everybody else sees flip, but it's actually not. So uh, so that's just a nice, amazing feature from, from Microsoft. And another thing that I have noticed because I connect a lot of times with other companies in their tenants is that uh, if I then first join that tenant, I can't uh, add a custom background. Uh, so if I want to join a meeting and still be able to use my own customized background, I need to still stay in my tenant and just still join the meeting because if they invited me, I can do that. So, so that's an, another amazing feature from Microsoft. But if I'm then to present my screen, uh, whoever is in that organization need to promote me to be a presenter first, because if not, I have no permissions to do the screen sharing. So there's a lot of cool features from, from Microsoft. And this is actually how that new custom uh, background to, to add the new one is uh, looking like. You just click here, add a new, and then you can add them within your, within your Teams client. Um, and of course, this is how it looks in, in the end where you have everything uh, up, and, uh, up and running. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, please do remember not to flip the images. That's kind of the, the main key point that you should take from this one. And uh, if, as you can see, if I'm now, I'm in the Sinan and Metoriti Oi tenant, if I will have switch up here to jump into, let's say, uh, a Microsoft tenant, then uh, and joining a meeting, then I will not be able to to go in and change my background. But if I'm not joining the Microsoft tenant, I'm not able to do the chatting as well. So there's a, a few hiccups to, to make this perfect, but of course Microsoft will fix this eventually. 
we just need to wait a little bit. Uh, another thing is that as an organizer, uh, you can now very soon also end the meeting for everyone because this is something we have noticed, especially with running a lot of events uh, that we are doing in Valo, is that sometimes people forget to leave the meeting. And especially if you're doing a recording, the recording is going to keep running in case, unless someone stops it, if the meeting is still running. So, so this is a really handy feature that is coming so that you can really go in and just end the meeting for everyone uh, to make sure that all so the recording stops and that other people are not uh, fooled to think that it's a meeting going on because that's the problem when you ha especially have the meeting inside of teams and someone suddenly join in maybe like a little bit late and they think that they might maybe the meeting is still running and I can I can join them and then they see that oh there's a meeting going on in my channel I'm going to jump into that but then there's no one there besides the one person that forgot to uh, go out of the meeting so this is again a, a great tips for for everyone to start to use. Uh, it's also possible to to make some fun um, because uh, you can also use Snapchat filters to to uh, to kind of make more social ways of the meetings. You shouldn't do this if you have like an executive meeting with your boss, but this is something that you can do uh, if you for instance have like a happy hour or if you have uh, uh have kind of like the social hour in your company and and you are trying to replicate a little bit of the feelings that you will have if you will be in in the office so feel free to jump to that link and figure out how to download the, the snapchat uh, filter uh, app for your uh, for your computer mac or windows and then to to really have fun with that, you you can do a lot of fun with this, and and uh, that's what it's all about. Sometimes you need to be a little bit of social as well, even if we are social distancing these days. Um, so yeah, uh, those are some of the tips that you should start to to look into. Uh, another thing is that um, you need to really have the rare right device to use with Microsoft Teams. Uh, so for instance. Um, a lot of people is asking me, um, I'm uh, or, or talking with me and saying, I'm sitting all the time in teams. I always have the headset on, my ears get warm and, and these kind of things. So what can you do? Um, of course, it depends on your situation, uh, but there's a few options. So for instance, uh, try to mix it up. Sometimes maybe use like a speaker. Uh, speaker uh, device instead of the headset because then you can move around, you can stand up and, and people will still hear you well if you have a great device and especially the Teams verified devices like this one from Sennheiser. Uh, or you can, if you are uh, into having a headset and you want to have some noise cancelling and some background noise uh, fixes and all these kind of things and you don't want to set up like a streaming desk that a lot of people doing these days, uh, you can go into buying typically a headset like the one that I'm currently testing, which is a Sennheiser S again, um, because this one is also noise cancelling. So even if you will sit in the open office later, you will not be so much disturbed by, by your colleagues and these kind of things. And, and it, it really works well. It can also connect with your mobile, so you can switch between uh, mobile calls and between this and also the meeting. So, so this is just some couple of tips to devices that really, really help you with those meetings. Um, but let's go back to Teams and uh, some tips and tricks about uh, the, the conversations, like how to do better conversation, when to do group chat, when to do private chat, and, and these kind of things. And I still see we are good on time, so that's awesome. Um, um, so, did you know that you can use the the, the tag, like the the at to to tag people? Uh, you can uh, tag people, you can tag teams, or you can even tag the channel. So, so this is a really great way to raise someone's attention because uh, depending on how the everyone has set their notification level in teams. Uh, this is a really nice way to make sure that people see that you're trying to get their attention. So, so this is uh, kind of like the same way as you are tagging someone in in LinkedIn or in Facebook and these kind of things. So, so, so this is a really, really handy feature. And as you see, you can tag the full team, or you can tag the channel. And here, of course, you need always to be <laughs> kind of uh, thinking. Uh, do I really need to tag the full team? Uh, is it better to go into the channel and, and tag the people in that channel? Or is it, or maybe I will just tag like two or three members because those are the people that I really want to, to get into touch. And when you're tagging a channel, it only notify uh, people that uh, are either following that channel or that have added that channel to their favorites. So you're also not kind of spamming people because you don't want to do that. 
uh, and that's what I really love about, especially when you are ta tagging people with the with the channel. You are not um, risking to kind of feeling that you are spamming people. Um, uh, so, so you do use the at mention to get your coworkers' attention. Um, one thing that um, a lot of uh, people is doing is that I see they are just typing at mention and and then they're starting to type the name of a person and then suddenly uh, you see the full name like so you see in like new trail more for instance uh, so do the backspace uh, 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 until you have only the first name because in it's kind of really really formal to use the full name of of a colleague if it's especially a colleague that you work really well with if it's your boss or or the CEO of the company then it depends of course of the corporate culture and everything but uh, typically, when you are at mentioning a person, just at mention them by their first name. So it's all a couple of backspaces, depending on how long the the name is, and and then you will manage to do that uh, or delete if you are on on a Mac. Um, don't mention a team or a channel as a mention unless you are really needing to do that. Uh, Preferable use the channel instead of the team uh, because uh, with the channel it will uh, be limited as I mentioned to people that is following it or has this other favorite. And also don't expect uh, people to reply to you directly or immediately. Oh, uh, now I see on my phone I have an at mention. I need to kind of jump in it immediately because it's not uh, it's not that. Ex have uh, and feel that the experience should be similar to the one that you have if you are doing. Um, an email send. So people will respond to you whenever they have uh, the time to do so. Um, so yeah, um, other tips for conversation is um, be a little bit careful to invite external users or into your conversations. Because typically if you invite an external guest uh, into a team, uh, then they will see all of those conversations as well. So be, make sure that people actually know that uh, they are <laughs> uh, then talking with externals. And one practice that we have in in my in our company in, in Wallo, if it's like a channel, if it's a team that you have external people in, you just uh, add uh, external on end of the naming convention because then everybody sees that. Uh, and, and that's like a really quick fix to, to help on this. Um, a lot of people is like liking uh, with, with the like button or they put the heart and these kind of things. It doesn't necessarily mean that a person like you or uh, or that everything is great. It just means that, oh, I, I understood what you said and, and that is great. Thank you for that. Um, another tip is that uh, don't write like a full page of, of a message when you're doing that in chat. Uh, uh, messages should be uh, short and uh, concise, should be on the point. Uh, make sure that you do that. Uh, one thing that I really think is important is that you should have a, a fun channel. Always have like one channel in your team that is all about the fun things, because if not, uh, and my experience is that if you have uh, not the fun channel, and then people talk about everything in all of the channels. So it means that typically it can be uh, a lot of uh, junk in, in the in the in the channels and in, in, in the chat. So it means that it's really hard to find that really important content. You can also do like hashtags on uh, to as we are used to doing in LinkedIn and Twitter and, and other places to to get the key terms because those you can search for later. So this is now in, if I will go in the ch chat in, inside of Teams, I can say hashtag follow fast. And then later on, I can see all and search for all other type of conversation that has the same hashtag. Makes it super easy and quick and, and find my, my knowledge and uh, the stuff that I'm searching for afterwards. Um, expand button. I, I don't think, know if everybody is aware that you can actually go down here when you have our inside of the teams to expand the window. So you can actually do a lot of more things. For instance, you can do uh, an announcements. You can do uh, um, post in multiple channels because that is something that is really important, especially for a product company as, as well, is that sometimes I'm having all the different partners I'm working with inside of teams, but they are inside of separate teams. So then I want to make an announcement that say, hey, yeah, now the new version of Valo is out and I want to post that to everyone. And it will be a little bit uh, copy pasting before uh, we got the chance to actually do the post in multiple channels. So then I can write the same post and it will be separated in, in all the channels, um, which makes it a lot, lot better. Uh, we can also go in and uh, put in uh, the exclamation mark to really get attention of people when it comes to uh, the, the fact of the conversation as well. 
Um, another tip is that if you do a typo, uh, <laughs> and also this is something I see more and more, is uh, especially in the team's client, is that people uh, are using it wrong. So for instance, if I want to reply to a conversation, uh, don't start to type down here. <laughs> uh, remember to click the reply button first, and then you can start to type, because if not, it's going to be uh, separate threads. Uh, and that happens all the time. This is a really bad UI design for Microsoft to, to allow for that. And in the mobile phone, there's no issue with the same, but in the desktop client or the web client, uh, you do that. And if you type something wrong, you can also, uh, actually that's the wrong text there, sorry about that, I will come back to that typo thing later. Uh, and um, and, uh, and just, let's see, this was going backwards, yeah. Tips for private chat. Um, I do really love private chat, and this is something that everybody should consider if because sometimes you have the question, shall we have a team? Shall we have a private chat? Shall we have the private channel or these kind of things? And one thing that I really, really do love is the capability for private chats, because this is for uh, up to uh, a lot of people that can do it, uh, but keep the number of people low, but this is where you can really go in and do ad hoc, uh, ad hoc uh, chatting with, with your colleagues. And you can even go in and name them uh, and have, a different name on the chat, so it will be really easy to go later on into the activity and into the into your chats to see uh, to kind of uh, go into the right chat instead of like having a team for everything. So if you're just going to discuss a few things, don't create a team. Uh, you don't even need to create a channel for that. It's a lot better just to do that in a small private chat. Uh, do remember that uh, if you share files here, it's stored in the OneDrive of the person that uh, is uploading it. So, so that's something or, or creating creating the first part of the chat. So do remember that that all the files when you do that, if I'm creating the chat and I'm, I'm inviting Mark to this one, then it will be in my OneDrive, but he all automatically will have access to, to the files from there. So, so it works seamlessly, but if then, for instance, this is something that you are really scared that will be getting lost if I will leave the company, because if it's in my OneDrive, files gets lost if I'm leaving. So, so then it might be that you need to have some plan on how to move this from that private chat into to a team or into a channel. Uh, but for ad hoc uh, discussions, this is really, really cool. If you're working on uh, an offer to a potential Valor customer, for instance, I a lot of times end up using the private chat internally in the Valor team because uh, then it's easier to add different members and they don't need to be involved in the full team where we are sitting and, and working. But do not assume that you have privacy because uh, even if it's a private chat, uh, your company can see what you're writing there. So uh, don't assume you have privacy. If you want to talk about things that you, you don't want people to see, use another platform. Don't, don't use Teams for that. Um, and you can also go in, uh, if I add uh, a person to this uh, discussion, uh, we can also choose if this person should see what we already talked about or if they should not see that. Typically, I think that is always best practice to include the chat history, but at least you have the option to choose. So you can decide whatever works for you. Um, another thing is that, um, as you can see here, we are going back to the um, dimension tags and you can also go and uh, use tagging as you can see here. So here we're actually using tags and we are having also the possibility to, to tag a person and with, inside a tag we can add separate people so that instead of using only at mention as we talked about before, so where we can mention a team, we can mention a, a chat uh, or like a, a channel or, or a team or a person, now also in teams you can start to use tags where you can actually control more who has uh, access or who will be notified by this tag. And this is a really, really cool and handy feature when you feel that um, the team or like the channel is, is not uh, targeting people good enough because maybe the persons are in different teams and you want to tag them even if they are in multiple teams and this is where the tagging coming in because you, it, it's not linked to a, to a team or a channel so you can just really link uh, the, uh, the mentioning and uh, notification to, to a topic instead of limiting it to the the team or the channel. This is a really, really cool feature and you should start to, to test it out if you haven't done it already because it really, really helps on getting notification to, to the right people in, in your company. Um, and as I mentioned, it's also possible to do a mention of your chats. 
and here it's uh, just uh, after you're adding one or two per uh, after you're adding one or more persons to your group you can just click them a small pencil up here uh, to go in and change the name and this is what you really should do because if you don't uh, if you have a lot of private chats and you don't go in and change the names it will be really hard to later on understand what did i talk about here or what was this chat about so uh, really go in and name the chats uh, to to different uh, um, yeah to, to what it actually is all about like for instance here we have with Cameron has a, a lunch group so discussing what we should do for lunch where we should go for lunch and, and these kind of things so so this is really something that it will be helpful later on when you have like 200 of these <laughs> private chats and to fi find the one that is uh, the right and what that uh, chat is all about um, and also pay attention to your colleagues' availability status, you know, because uh, one thing that is um, that is uh, a little bit confusing are the two green ones here, as you can see. This is the available one, and here have the available out of office one. So this is automatically coming when you are on your mobile uh, and you are in the Teams app. You are kind of available, but you are also out of the office because you are on the mobile phone. Uh, but uh, it's really hard to notice the difference. So uh, because if I'm on the go, I'm not that available if, as if I'm uh, inside of the office. Uh, and if a colleague has do not disturb, respect that and don't try to type to him in the chat or, uh, or uh, these kind of things, because they may be notified uh, depending on how the notification are. Uh, like down here in, in the corner, it might pop up uh, that, oh, hey, what are we having for lunch today? Or uh, what we will do when we go for a beer after work? It's not that kind of fun maybe to see those if you're doing a presentation. So so do think about that when you are uh, talking with your colleagues. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, when you are in a private chat, uh, the files are uploaded to the author's OneDrive. So please be aware of that. It, it really works well and sometimes you don't need a team to, to have discussions because it might be just a few things you need to dis discuss ad hoc. Like uh, I have a new version of my presentation for the Valofest and I need some input from my colleagues. Uh, that typically works well to just put in a private chat and not to share inside a Teams, for instance, because it's only there for a limited amount of time and afterwards it's all good and, and we can go get on with our, our work. Uh, and uh, this one was the one I mentioned before, because this is really often that you are sometimes you are typing wrong uh, and that happens a lot of times, especially when we are chatting and these kind of things. Uh, so uh, if you do that, just click the up uh, button on your keyboard two times uh, and then you are coming up in the chat again. So if I will be now in Teams and I click two times, it will pop up to, to my latest uh, message and I can go in and change it quickly and that is super cool because it helps me to work much much faster and be much more efficient i don't need to move the mouse up and, and click like edit and these kind of things or like replay again it goes automatically to to that place of place where i was and allowing me to continue writing without even moving my hands from the keyboard um Conversations, you can even start a conversation from the command bar. So as you can see, you, you can type directly uh, even in the command bar here. So again, it might help you to work more effic efficiently. I am catch myself, I'm not doing that very often, but at least you have the possibility to do that if, if you like to do so. Um, and um, another thing that you need to do, as, and this is really, really important because uh, notifications out of the box from Microsoft is really, really off because you are notified everywhere <laughs> about things that is really not that actual for me. Uh, so you need to really go into uh, the settings and the notification settings to really go in and put your preferred level of this because if not, you're going to be spammed. Uh, you're going to be uh, notified all the time and Typically, uh, you don't need everything to go to your email, for instance, and maybe you don't even need to have it on the banner. Uh, I catch myself a lot of times just only show in the feed because I'm anyways inside of Teams. I can go to my activity and I will find everything there. And also, if people really want my attention, they should do at Knut so that they will at mention me and then I can go in and see those. The rest of the things I will just find if I really want to find that information. So, so that's how it, how it works for me at least. Um, 
And when it comes to channel, uh, you can also set specific notifications on the channels. So for instance, if you put everything off here, only show in the feed, and this is something that I like to do, uh, I can go into some of the important channels. Maybe I have like uh, the, the Valo Fest channel, or like I have the, the, the Valo the new version channel, and I want to uh, really be notified by that because it's really important for me. Uh, and then you can actually go into that channel and I can go and specify how I want to have my notification for that channel. So there I can put then, oh, put it in the banner and in the feed because the banner means that I will get the small notification down here in the right corner of my screen. This is important if there are important channels that you want to follow. Um, Again, the command bar, uh, one thing that I think is really, really cool is that you can just do, uh, do not disturb in the command bar, and then you set it automatically to do not disturb. And there's a lot of other quick commands that you can really do from the command bar that will help you to work more uh, effic efficient, efficiently. Um, and if you don't have any questions, I will just jump to some other best practice advices. But if someone has a question at this point in time, we can really up for a few questions of what I just mentioned for you guys. If someone has some other advices to share, feel free to raise your hands and, and we can do that. If not, I'm just going to continue. thought I might jump in there. I, I, um, I guess thank you for, for all those tips. I can't tell you how many times I myself have uh, started a new Teams conversation <laughs> instead of replying to an existing thread. That that's, happens that's a all very good the time. one to point out. Yeah. <laughs> I really hope Mike's all fix that one soon because this is like clutter, you know. It's like, and the problem is that you can't fix it afterwards. So if you type there, you, you cannot undo it. So, so this is the biggest issue, you know, because if you could undo it and delete it, that will be fine. But that is not that easy. So, yeah. A nice drag function, perhaps get that message and put it onto the end of the re previous one or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, yeah. But I do know there is a user voice uh, request to fix that uh, that's got a lot of votes. So uh, it does. Yeah. So go voting, people. <laughs> we need yeah. more votes. <laughs> Give it some more votes. Uh, Tags yeah. and Teams is another one as well. Uh, it's an interesting, and it's, it's a recent development, isn't it? The, um, the uh, So an interesting way, I guess, of organizing people. Um, uh, outside of a concept of uh, a team or um, or, a, or a channel, um, I guess as a person I can be tagged with multiple attributes in a way, can't I? I can I can yeah. tag myself for I can be tagged with the skills that I possess or perhaps the topics that I'm interested in in a workplace, which would be quite uh, quite handy. Yeah, and I think we haven't seen the last of what my, where Microsoft wants to go with tags, you know, because just as you mentioned, you can be, you can kind of uh, be tagged with topics that you are interested in, or uh, at maybe later you can go in and follow the same topics, you know, we don't know if that is coming, but that would be pretty handy that in my activity feed, I can kind of go in and specify how I want my activity feed based on the same topics, for instance, that I'm interested in or I'm skilled in these kind of things. So I don't think we see the the, the kind of the end of the uh, the functionality that Microsoft is going to bring us with, with the topics. It's, uh, to my experience, it's been a little bit challenging for companies to start to use it uh, because it's uh, challenging how they have worked up until now. So so typically they have worked with the, the, the teams, they started to work with uh, the channels, now they got the private channels, uh, and then we got the topics. So, so it's mm -hmm. kind of challenging for the... Uh, for the infrastructure that I put inside of Teams, because this one hasn't anything to do with the channels or the teams. You can really tag people uh, across multiple teams and just the colleagues, as you said, yeah. that might have a skill set and these kind of things. So, uh, but uh, people should start to look into this. It's uh, it's really really handy, and I think, uh, as I mentioned, this will continue to evolve to other places. Nice one. Yeah. So we do have uh, well, a good half hour left to, uh, available to you. So uh, any other exciting, interesting things to to, to take us through? Uh, do you need a glass of water or anything while you 
Well, I'm, I'm, I have my I have my Coke Zero next to me, so it's early oh, morning here. So, uh, and I don't drink coffee. People that knows me knows I don't like coffee. So, oh, so, okay. so yeah, I, I'm not old enough. Is what I'm saying to people when they yeah. talk about that one. So, <laughs> if, if you came to Melbourne, and you don't drink coffee. I'm not sure what. Uh, well, I know you've been to Melbourne before. Yeah, uh, here in Australia, it's, it's like yeah. the coffee capital of uh, it, it Australia. It is the coffee capital. So I probably haven't been there long enough to to be influenced. <laughs> So that's probably the issue. So, so who knows? Maybe, in, maybe later on when I will be there longer. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, no, I've been a few times to Melbourne. It's a really nice city. And coming from Europe, you feel like yourself like home in Melbourne. So uh, there's always the battle I know between Sydney and Melbourne. So <laughs> I was going to say, if we've got any other Australian uh, people who are particularly from Sydney, then we don't want to be exclusionary. So exactly, uh, every so, city in Australia is uh, is has got its uh, great points. Yeah, I I, I love the people in australia so you guys is really cool so, uh, so that's uh, like the thing that i fall in love with in australia is like the the people uh, there's so much amazing people there so i do hope i will be back one day so but yeah let's continue with a few tips and tricks from here and uh, yeah i have a lot of slides so uh, i think we should be good with the 30 minutes if not i will just jump into teams as well and show a few things uh, directly in teams so so let's that's see right yeah uh, we talked about conversations, uh, but we, we shouldn't forget to talk about channels because channels is <laughs> where all those conversations is happening. Uh, and uh, I, I have been seeing a lot of companies that are trying to think through everything, you know, that do so much work uh, figuring out like how shall my team's architecture look like and how shall my channels look like and all these kind of things. Uh, but you can't event everything you you don't know everything you don't know how that team will evolve and all these kind of things and and this is really where you should go in and don't do too much work in the beginning set up like a couple of channels and and let the afterwards grow inside the team and let the people create the channel that is natural for them to create. Uh, do create channels to focus your discussions because if you only have the general then again it's not good so um and do create at least one channel for fun stuff to to mimic how we do uh, work in in uh, when we are meeting everyone in in person. So uh, have that kind of the coffee break, <laughs> coffee break channel, for instance. If you don't have that as, as a team, maybe you have a break room team because we don't have the break room in teams yet. It's coming, but it's not there yet. So maybe you have like a team just for for breaks, and maybe you have a yoga break, and then you have a coffee break channel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So so do think that how we can be more, um, yeah, have more fun stuff, uh, basically, so that people will uh, get a little bit the same social uh, happiness as they will have done if we will have been in, in, in the same call and uh, like in, in, the, in the same room. Um, Reserve the general channel for team-wide announcements. So, uh, because you can't kind of get rid of the general channel, so so use that one for something specific. And one thing that I found is that you should do that for team-wide announcements because uh, this is the place where you want to do those things. Um, private channels and when shall we use these and shall we use them or not? Uh, this is a really really great discussion. And uh, for instance, private channels might be great when you want to. <laughs> limit to who sees everything and all this kind of stuff. But don't forget that uh, if you have private channels, it's not the same SharePoint site in the back end. So you have a different SharePoint site that is created for you for, for, for the private uh, talks and, and, and the private channels. So you should always battle in yourself. Do we really need to have this private uh, or not? Uh, will this make sense to have as a private channel? Because then at least everybody that uh, is in the team can uh, uh, can get it that you are allowing inside the same team and you don't need to kind of mod moderate two teams. Uh, you can moderate only one and then inside the private channel. Uh, so you need to ask yourself always these kind of questions because the problem is that uh, if you have a private channel, you can't change it to a normal channel or the other way around. So, so this is, of course, maybe something that Mike's will fix like in a few months. But uh, again, right now you can't do that. So it means that if you want to uh, kind of move away from private to, to like a public channel, uh, it, it's not going to work. And since this is stored in separate site collections and all this kind of stuff in SharePoint as well, it might need to be <laughs> a migration job to then move content from from this place to another place because it actually has to then create a new channel to, to do 
what you want to do. So rethink and think if that is good. I think there's a lot of cases where you might want to have a private channel, for instance. Uh, one way you can do it is if you have like a, a, a team where you want to invite external people in, but you don't want external people to see the full content of the team so that maybe you as a company can have some chats that your external uh, co consultants or your external contractor don't see, then that's a perfect setup for a uh, team with private ch uh, channels because then you could, uh, as a team, you can have the chats in, in the public channels and then you can just talk with your contractors in, in, in the, the private channels or you can even have a one channel for each contract that you have as a private channel. So, so that is a really great uh, example of where it might work to have the private channels. Uh, use emojis in, in the channel's name to make them more alive because uh, as you see, then it's, it's, it just looks a lot better. It's not like boring uh, to just have the have the name. Uh, the only sad fact is right now you, you can't do anything with, with the general in, in that sense. So, but that is of course, hopefully something that is going to be fixed at some point in time as well. But again, you see, this is much more pretty, much more exciting to, to see, see them work. And when people work all the time in teams, those small things is worth a lot. So we, we need to, to make sure that that is working like this. And as mentioned, make sure you have some funny channels. Like uh, here you see there's no, no, no funny channel for fun stuff. So here typically all that fun stuff will happen in all of the channels compared to over here where we have like a community zone where people can then go and talk about everything. Uh, so, so that's uh, is the best tips that I will want to send you with is that if you don't have a, fun channel or right now in your company, go and create one and you will see that the people are going to talk there about everything and they are not going to spend all the time during the meetings uh, and during the other uh, channels to talk about the, the things that is not relevant to, to the topic of, of the channel. Because you should, that's the reason why we're creating channels is we want to streamline the communication so that we're talking only about the things that is around the budget or the contractors or the planning in, in the separate channels. So, so do that if you haven't done it already. It's also possible uh, because uh, to be a moderator of, of a channel, typically you need to be an owner of the team. So it's not enough to be a member, uh, but sometimes you might want to have people that is moderators that is not the team owner. And yes, we can also do that. So we can actually go in and add custom moderators to a channel so that they don't need to be a team owner. So you then will just go into channel settings and there under uh, who are the moderators, you can go and click manage and then you can uh, add also the members of the team to be a moderator. And this is a really quick uh, and handy thing to to do uh, so that you don't have too many owners. But of course you do remember that you need to have at least two owners of every team if you should look into governance side of things. Um, as I just mentioned, um, there's a lot of cool integrations going on and this is where Microsoft is doing more and more integration and for the North American uh, keynote we had like last, uh, last night, um, we had Mark Cashman from Microsoft also talking about a lot of the integration between SharePoint and Teams, but we have a lot of integration also between Outlook and Teams. So for instance, if you, uh, if you want to just get your, for instance here, I will, let's just click play so we can see it. So, so for instance here, you, we are soon gonna get that button like share to Teams so that I can just uh, really quickly uh, share to a team because here I can then go in and type the, the name of the team and uh, this email will be uh, then uh, included into the team's chat uh, and also the documents are going to be uploaded and, and, and everything uh, which is really really cool uh, and, and another thing is that uh, until this feature is rolled out you can do the same if you're going and finding the the email uh, of your uh, team uh, because then you can just forward or you can include that email uh, in, or, or the, yeah, the email name into all of your email conversations and you will also go on to get exactly the same experience as here, but this is a little bit more user-friendly because you don't need to go and find that really huge long uh, email name uh, that you're having. 
Um, but but as you can see, uh, this one. Uh, uh, but but uh, you can also now really soon, and it's starting to be rolling out. So you can actually reply as well to conversations uh, inside of Outlook. So uh, if you forgot to to if you forgot to go in and you, you have a mention and you have the email notification, you will very soon be able to actually do also reply to to the conversation inside of Outlook. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this one, but, but at least it's cool to see all of this integration that Microsoft is building to make us more, work more productively, productively and have more efficient day of work. So, um, uh, and as I mentioned, we can also go and uh, just share the conversation from inside of Teams. So um, if I will just... Uh, Go here under the two, I can just uh, add the email of, of my team and uh, then I can email directly to that one. So for this one, I'm actually going to go and show how to do that. So so let's just jump out. Uh, I'm on my slides 45 or 62. So I think we are still good. We have 15 minutes left. Um, so so let's just jump over here and I will show you a couple of things also inside of inside of the team's client itself. So for instance, I mentioned before that you can rename your chats. Uh, here you go and do that. Here you see if this is remote work. Uh, here under the file, you also have the files folder. So whatever file I have been sharing here uh, will come uh, into the same. So for instance, here I have my, um, let's see. This one can upload it, and and then this one will now be uh, inside of the files here. So, uh, so you see here inside it will come in a few seconds. But all the files that we have been sharing will come here under the files tab. Um, I can also go here and you see that Peter he just uh, talked with Kate, uh, and I can also reply. So hello, Kate. Wallow, Wallow Fest is awesome. And now you see that we have over here, we also have the, the, the possibility to see when did Kate see this message and when did she read it and so on. So we also have those things inside our team. So if I will go over here, uh, this, uh, not this one, over here, I'm logged in as Peter. So if I will now go into my chats, you see that I have two one here and you saw that I was uh, having the notification here. And we see here now that it's been seen. So we also have that kind of capability to go in and know when people was reading and seeing uh, my uh, my activities. Uh, and we can also go again uh, under files, and they will see files that me and uh, Kate and Peter was sharing here. Uh, but from the if you want to email a team, then you just need to go here, click teams. Here we have a lot of different teams. Uh, so let's just do the crisis management template team that I have here. Um, and from here, you can just go into here and you can go and uh, find your uh, email to uh, your team. You can also get the link to this team. So if you want to share this one with your colleagues and you don't want them to find it under join and create, you can just click here to get the direct link to the team. If I ever want to leave, I can leave the team from here. That makes me leaving the team. I can also click hide because this is a really great feature that Microsoft has that you can go and hide some of your teams and then it's come, uh, coming up under here under hidden teams and here also microsoft has some ai in the background so if i'm not in the team uh, for a few uh, like for 30 days or something like that it's automatically hidden uh, and i can of course go afterwards and click here to show it and this is a really nice way to also organize my teams i can also go here and uh, i can also pin it to the top and these kind of things or so my channels i can go here and pin my channel to the top uh, as you can see here uh, I can go and get the email address of that channel, as you can see here. You just get the email address, uh, and that is directly to 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 the general channel. So if I now wanted to send an email to to this one, I will just copy the the copy this one. Let's see, copy like this. I will go into Outlook. So just let's go to office.com, and then I will just uh, sign in, and from here I can open up my Outlook. And if I now wanted to forward uh, something to, to this email, or I would just maybe want to write a new email and I want to send it to my team, uh, I can then just go and do that. So that's how easy it is to, 
to send an email to your channel in Teams already. And here, if I'll go in and add, add some attachments again, those attachments are also going to get uploaded. So, so this is, uh, so let's just take my son here. Uh, and uh, now I will just click uh, hello team. Wow, fest is so super cool. And uh, Valo Fest demo. And now this one will be sent into our crisis management team here and into the general channel. So, so that's how easy it is to get your attachments from an email, for instance, right now. Uh, another thing that we can just really quickly look out uh, at was exactly what I was doing here. So for instance, now you see that I have my, and here you see it already come in with the image and, and everything. So that is a super quick way to really get the, everything from Outlook and into Teams because sometimes not e everyone in your company is comfortable with just sitting inside of Teams. Uh, I can also now, as you see, I can start my conversation. So hello world, this is cool. And I'll just click enter. And now if I wanted to go in and uh, make some modification, I can just click the up arrow two times and it should pop up here. Actually, now it didn't work. Always the demo effect, but that's what it is. It usually works. Uh, and also you see here now that if I want to reply to this one, it's so tempting to start to type down here, but don't do that. Make sure you click that reply button first and then start to type because if not, you have uh, all this kind of uh, weird looking uh, Teams chat inside of your organization. Uh, but really go when you do conversations and, and these kind of things, use the formatting. Because for instance, here you see, uh, if I go down here and I want to format a new talk, you can see I can choose either new conversations or I can use an announcements. And announcement is really great when you want to let people know about something because here you can choose the background color for the header. You can go in also and uh, use the image and it will have like a different icon on the right side because it was an announcement and people will see that it's an announcement. And you can also see here that I can go and post in multiple channels I can select channels from here, so I can also post this to the IT team, the general update, and now you see that it will be posted in these two channels. We can also go and make it really important, like with the explanation mark, and then you see it also get the red one down here. Uh, so this is a really great way to, uh, to, to different, the different type of uh, conversation that you have inside of your environment. Um, and one thing that I really want to show when we have nine minutes left, this is kind of the interactions here between SharePoint and, and Teams. Uh, because for instance, now if I'll go into my, my Teams over here, you see that I have the secrets here. So this is the secret for a channel that some uh, someone has access to, and but not everyone. But if I now will go and open this one in SharePoint, you will see that up here, this is inside of crisis management template secrets. So there's another site in SharePoint. But what is really cool now that Microsoft has done is that they have the link here in the navigation so that if I want to go to the team on top of this, then I can do that. And if someone can leave, that would be great. Thank you. He's the next one up, so he's just a little bit excited like I am, so that's okay. Uh, but as you saw right now is that now I jump to the parent team and I'm still inside of SharePoint. So, so that is a really nice feature that Microsoft has done to connect like the, these two things. And you also see here we have the message that this folder is connected to a channel in Teams. What we shouldn't do now is to go here to documents and uh, create a folder because this is like top secret folder in SharePoint and I will click it here and create. What do you think now will happen with this one? You think it will come in here in Teams? You might think so, but it's not gonna do that. So, so now we kind of have uh, here inside of Teams, we have uh, my channels and I have like uh, another channel and channel or folder here inside of SharePoint. So if you're working inside of Teams, don't be uh, tempted to, to go into SharePoint and create all these folders over here because that it will be just confusing for your end users. Another thing is that uh, if I'll go to my uh, parent team here and we go to documents, here you will see the same folder structure that we have. Uh, and if I will now go to, let's say, uh, planning, and I will try to rename this one uh, because people might think that, oh, I had a typo here or whatever. So let's rename this to planning 
Wallow Fest because I'm really thinking that's a great idea. Uh, what is going to happen now if I go back to Teams and we have planning? The chat works well, but if I will go to my files folder, there might be some issue. And this is happening all the time because uh, right now, of course, team didn't know nothing about the fact that this changed the name. So, so you need to be really careful with what you're doing inside of SharePoint when you are working uh, with teams, because now this uh, is not going to be uh, that easy to fix. Let's see if it's going to be fixed by just renaming it back. And uh, you see that I right now uh, didn't manage to do that because uh, teams already created uh, the planning for me. So, so there's a, you should just be careful with going into uh, into SharePoint and do all those modifications inside of here because it's just going to give you a headache. Uh, so let's just jump really quick and ask if there's any any questions. Uh, if not, um, I think I'm I'm good uh, from from my side. I have a couple of more slides I can show, uh, but let's see if there's some questions first. Oh, there's nothing in the chat uh, window, but if anyone does have any questions on the, some of the features that Knut has just demonstrated for us, uh, feel free to unmute yourself or put your hand up, perhaps uh, raise your hand. There's a feature of Microsoft Teams, of course, to raise your hand and uh, we'll see if we can uh, uh, get your questions that way. Awesome. And if there's not any questions, we, we have like a couple of more minutes before we will hand it over to Lee. So, so let me then just uh, quickly uh, share like the couple of last slides I have. So, and feel free to to pin me afterwards as well if if you have any questions. So, um, and reach out to me on social media or uh, LinkedIn or, or or even in the channel, and I will reply to them afterwards. Uh, so yeah, a few other tips and tricks that we do have. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this one, but there's a back and forward button here up in the left corner of your teams. This is really, really great when it comes to if you go somewhere and you want to get back to where you was really, really quickly. Uh, that is the best way to do that, especially if you are inside of some apps in teams. It's actually the app slows a lot quicker if you just use the back button. Um, also, when you do schedule a meeting, uh, right now you can even go in and check uh, with using the scheduling assistant inside of Teams if your uh, colleague is available. That was not in the capability before. And also, uh, if you do a lot of work in Teams, schedule the meetings in Teams because if there's uh, new colleagues joining, etc., they can see automatically that there's um, a meeting coming up. It's maybe not in the calendar, but at least they will be notified. Uh, there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts for Teams, uh, and this is uh, really helpful when you're sitting and typing and working all the day. Uh, and there's uh, one for the Mac and one for the, the for the Windows devices. So, uh, so uh, if you follow this link, you will get to both of them, both for the Mac and and, and the computer or, and the PC. So this is really really helpful, especially the the zoom in, uh, these kind of things. When you are, uh, if you want to do those, uh, you have the uh, go to search and uh, show commands and keyboard shortcuts. All these kind of things will just help you work a much more productively way. Um, if you have a lot of teams and you are wondering how will I easily find them, you have actually the filter button up here. And a lot of people are not noticing that. I think Microsoft will make it red or something so people will actually catch attention to it. Uh, but if you click this one, you can actually start to type. Uh, and search, and that's search in all of your teams and also the channel name of the team. So it's a really quick way to define that channel that you want to, to have because a lot of people, in my experience, they're remembering the name of the channel, but not the team. So, so that's why this is a quick win. Um, raise the hand, as we mentioned, it's a feature that came now. Uh, it's funny to have meetings and people is raising the hand like we're in the school, but it actually do work when you have tried to do that for a little bit of time. Um, we have more faces coming, uh, so right now we can do like three by three, uh, but we are getting uh, uh, seven by seven, so we are getting the 49. Uh, so this is really especially for schools and educa educational companies that really this is great for. Um, and also don't forget that Teams templates are coming, so uh, you can also start with templating inside of Teams, or if you need help with Teams and Team Governance, Contact us in Valo. We have a great solution for that that you can start to use already today. So, so please do contact us if you want to create templates and start to work with templates and governance of Microsoft Teams because I think a lot of companies right now, they just jumped on this boat because they had to. 
uh, but they didn't have a plan behind it, you know. So uh, they just started to use it because people started and needed to work from home. So that's it from my side. Uh, it was really great to be uh, here with you guys. For you, it's already early afternoon. For me, the day is just starting. Uh, so uh, thank you guys. And yeah, feel free to reach out, uh, Knut. Uh, Relbe Moe uh, inside of LinkedIn or Twitter, uh, search by my name and you will find me. Uh, and good luck uh, to Lee and to you guys to, to close this up. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much, Nort. Um, yes, I will uh, just finish off the session here by stopping the recording. Um, Yay! And...